for Gregory Dawson! Guys, give it up for Alex, guys. Give it up for Alex. Hey, how you doing? How are you? Goodbye. Goodbye. Have a nice night, guys. Thank you. Bye. Like when I come up, you guys leave. That is good for the self-confidence. I have been traveling. Lately, I've been traveling. I was back in Indiana. Uh, I went to college in Indiana. Uh, I went to college in a very, very small, tiny, rural town in Indiana. Uh, this is how small and tiny it is. Uh, in order to get there, you had to uh, fly into Chicago, uh, get on the highway, drive south, and exit somewhere around 1953. That's, that's, that's where they were. Like, my, my GPS didn't really quite work correctly, but it knew I was in Indiana because it kept on saying my destination was on the far right. So it knew I was somewhere in the Hoosier State. Yeah. I went to, uh, I was one of the only two black kids on my college campus. Yeah, it was just me and the guy on the brochure. It was him and I. <laughs> I think his name was Steve, I'm not sure, but, but it wasn't weird or anything like that. The university loved us, they embraced us, they built us a separate profit and water fountain. It was awesome, guys. It was, it was great. It was great. It was great. It was a little weird, though, a little tension, because I'm from the Northeast, and so I grew up in a very liberal part of the country, and this is a very conservative part of the country, so racially and politically it was tough. You know, I'm not going to lie about that. So like when I was walking across the campus and a white woman would see me coming, you know, she would clutch her book bag and run to the other side of the quad. <laughs> I wasn't sure if because I'm black or because I was president of College Democrats. Like I wasn't sure <laughs> what was freaking her out, guys. I didn't think she was there. She didn't know if I was there to terrorize the community or organize it. Like it was just, that was, that was weird. Yeah. When you leave the Northeast, and you get out into the Midwest, you realize that there are not a lot of people of color in these towns. It's really strange. Like, my sister lives outside of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. We went out to dinner in her hometown, and uh, our busboy, his name was Alan. Like, that's where it is, where there's no people of color in these towns. And in the few people of color that there are, they are very talented. That's the one thing I get. Like, you know, they're very talented, they're very successful, they're very wealthy. Like, there are four black people in this town, and I was the fifth. All the four black people, they all had like jobs, houses, 401ks, families. You know, I've got like Hulu Plus. Like, that's the only, only, like I can watch This Is Us commercial free, and they're actually the black family from This Is Us. Like, that's not, that's not what it is. Yeah, it's strange that yeah. I was one of five black people in this town, and by far I was the least successful and the least talented, yeah. I felt like Tito Jackson. Like, that's how it was. I was playing Tito Jackson. It was horrible, guys. I was like, lie about that. Yeah. Um, I live in New York City. I do. I live in New York City. I live, uh, I live in Harlem. I'm not sure if you guys have heard of it, but yeah, I live in Harlem. Um, it's weird Harlem these days. It's weird now because uh, it is, uh, it's gentrified now, but it's also kind of ghetto still. So it's very confusing for me. Like, so when I get off the train at night, I'm not sure if I'm going to get mugged or sold an artisanal pickle. Like, that's, that's not the way you want to live your life, guys. No, it's not. Like, I got robbed at gunpoint the other day. A dude stuck his gun in my back and said, give me your wallet and the location of your yoga studio. Like, <laughs> are you serious? Like, dude, you can take my wallet, man. But that 715 Bikram class is crowded as it is. I'll take that to the grave. I will. Yeah. Outside of my uh, outside of my apartment, we have an NYPD mobile command unit. Um, I'm not sure if you guys know what a mobile you guys know what a mobile command unit is. <laughs> there will be a test. Right? I'm not sure if you guys know what a mobile command unit is. It's like a bulletproof treehouse for the cops. Right? That's that's what it is. It's for the cops to provide surveillance in your neighborhood 24 hours a day, seven days a week. All right, that's it. Do you know how messed up your neighborhood has to be if the cops have to sleep over? Like, that's not good, guys. Not a good neighborhood. Not a good neighborhood at all. And, you know, since they've been there, I don't feel much safer. I'm not going to lie. I'm not. And I, it's weird, because I live in Harlem, and I've seen some crazy stuff in Harlem. You know, we live through, like, you know, the crack epidemic and gang violence and gun violence and Bill Clinton. Now, we, we survived all of that, guys. But once the cops moved in, there went the neighborhood. Like, we're all moving out. It's weird. It's because I don't actually like my number one predator to be living so close to me. It's a little unsettling, guys. I'm, I'm not going to lie. Like, put it. 
like, put it like this, ladies, right? Ladies in the house, right? Imagine if you went home tonight and you found out that your new neighbor was any man alive. Like, then you'd be like, you'd run. You would. There's a Whole Foods in my neighborhood. Now, there's a Whole Foods on Martin Luther King Boulevard. Can you believe that? That's where we are in this world. Yeah. There we are. Like, I'm like a fan of Martin Luther King, but I'm sure he wasn't standing at the Lincoln Memorial going, I have a dream that one day all of the races will overpay for apples. Oh, yeah. He didn't say that. Yeah. He didn't say, I have a dream that one day all of God's children, white, black, Jews, and Gentiles will sing in that old Negro spiritual. Gluten free at last. <laughs> Thank God Almighty. <laughs> Gluten free at last. Oh, that's silly. That, that's like the worst part. I'm just, I'm just doing my dad up here. That's the worst part of the game of my life. Oh, it's horrible. It's embarrassing. Um, I, I, I used to live here in Washington, so it's always good to be. I used to start a comedy life here in, in D.C. Yeah, so it's always. Good to be back. I used to do a lot of political jokes when I lived here because, you know, when in Rome, you know, stone someone. I don't know. <laughs> I have a thing for Jeff Sessions. I'm not going to lie, guys. I mean, I'm, I, I mean, here's the thing with Sessions and me, all right? This is the truth, all right? I believe that Jeff Sessions has the voice of the white guy that you would hear at the beginning of a public enemy song. Like, I just, it is. I'm sorry. I don't you know, you're like you're listening to like Fear of a Black Planet, you know, track eight, you know, in the, in the beginning you hear, boy, you was a fine, fine credit. You was a credit to the Negro race. Here come the justice, like it's right there in front of your face. Get it, Chuck. It's true. I don't understand why Donald Trump keeps on saying he's not connected to Russia because it's all, it's so obvious. I mean, we all, I mean, like, it's obvious to everyone. Like, he actually has a brand new website, right? He has a brand new website that came out. It's www.donaldtrump.net. I mean, like, that's, you can't. You can't. I, uh, I grew up in New Jersey. I grew up in a, what'd you say? I'm sorry. Did you say something about New Jersey? Accent. Oh, no. <laughs> All right, always one of you. Are you from Jersey? No, sir. All right, then you're not allowed to say that. We don't make sense alone, man, all right? 16W, just in case you're wondering, yeah. I grew up in a town called Teaneck, New Jersey. Here's a little truth about, yeah, in the back, yeah, in the front. All right, do you, are you just clapping to be nice? Or are you just, all right, I'm sorry? Pretty much. Oh, pretty much, all right, well, that's even better. I like nice clapping, yeah. Um, Here's a little factoid about my hometown of Teaneck, New Jersey, guys. It is the first town in America to voluntarily desegregate, all right? That is the honest truth. That's not just a kick-ass setup for a joke. That is the honest truth. So before the Supreme Court mandated, right, Teaneck had integrated schools, we had integrated housing, we had integrated accommodations, right? But Teaneck is half Jewish, so we did have separate checks. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let me uh, let me tell you a little more about my life. People have come up to me all the time and say, Gregory, you're not black enough. Yeah, I get that a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, my name is Gregory Alexander Joseph, and that's actually my real name. It's not a stage name. <laughs> like, I didn't purposely go out and try to find the whitest sounding name for a black guy <laughs> and settled on Gregory Alexander Joseph because Wayne Brady was already taken. Like, no, this is actually my real name. No, but I do. Gregory, you're not black enough. Gregory, you sound like a white guy. Gregory, you're not a strong black man and I've heard this from all sorts of people man. I've heard this from friends from family from strangers like when I was younger my grandparents would come to visit they'd bring my brother a basketball and me a subscription to Newsweek all right like that's that's the honest truth like I had this guy come up to me after the show and say I wasn't black enough to don't listen to hip-hop which is not true guys I love hip-hop man I do I love Jay-Z all right that song he does with Coldplay is amazing. I love that song. I live in New York. I go on a lot of auditions. A few weeks ago, I went to meet with a movie producer, right? And they told me they're making a movie about the life of Barack Obama. And they wanted me to audition for the role of Joe Biden. <laughs> Got that kind of range, guys. <laughs> don't, don't have that kind of range. I'm 47 years old. Thank you for your applause. I appreciate it. I'll get home safely. Don't worry about it. Before, I just had a birthday in January. Just How you doing? 
Oh, I had a birthday in January. <laughs> Come on in. Oh, can we get them a table for two, please? <laughs> the burger looks great. I'm glad just seeing it from here it looks great. Uh, I just turned 47. People say, Gregory, you look good for your age. And the uh, reason I look good for my age is because black doesn't crack. You've all heard that. You probably have said that. It's true. That is the good news, guys. Good news, black does not crack. Bad news, black does attract a lot of bullets. So it's not all good, guys. Yeah. I'd rather have, like, crow's feet if I could wear a hoodie in the wintertime. That's all I'm saying. Yes. That's all I'm saying. I feel I'm above average, though. I am, I'm above average uh, in life expectancy, so that's how it is for me. Like, statistically speaking, I should have been dead sometime around the last episode of Seinfeld, so I'm feeling really, really good about myself. You know, you remember when you were, like, younger and you used to get those report cards and you used to have, like, above average and below average? I used to get made fun of by a friend of mine because he had above average in penmanship. I had below average in penmanship. He used to make fun of me all the time. But I've got above average in life expectancy, so I'm feeling pretty good about myself. Because you know what happened to that guy who's above average in penmanship? He's dead. <laughs> He's dead. He is. But on the bright side, his suicide note was perfectly legible. It was work hard. It was work hard. I'm gonna I'm gonna run on on here. I haven't I don't even know if I remember this joke. Um, all right, I'll just tell you a little more about my my meager life. Uh, I'm single. Thank you again for that applause. Uh, not even a Jersey applause for that one. Uh, this is why I don't tell people my exit. Like this <laughs> uh, my girlfriend recently broke up with me, guys. So thank you again. For, thank you. Yeah, that's appropriate. Yeah. Uh, here's what I did. Gentlemen, don't ever do this. This is what I did. I made a list of names of women I'd slept with. Yeah, I did that. I did. I made a list of names of women I slept with. My girlfriend found the list. Yeah. I said, darling, it is not a list of names of women I'd slept with. It's a list of names of our potential daughters. Yeah. That's thinking on your feet, guys. Right. Yeah. She didn't believe me, though. Okay. She didn't believe I was going to name my child Drunk Chick at Mardi Gras. Like, I was just... Hey, you guys have been great. I'm Gregory Joseph, man. Thank you so much. Thank you.